Introduce yourselves and uh, tell us who you are. All right, so how are we feeling? This is Friday, like, is everyone hyped right now? <laughs> the Hell Planet? All right, so um, my name is Jose, and I have a confession to make. I am a member of several DAOs, but I feel like I'm not really giving it my all, right? And so what this uh, panel is about is how can NFTs create more meaningful, deeper relationships for uh, the members of the DAO uh, and just in general, like the, the whole ecosystem of the DAO. Uh, so first let's do some intros. Um, I'll start over here. Hi, my name is Justice. I go by 0x Justice on the socials and in the DAO space. Um, I, uh, I kind of leveled up in DAOs over the past year through Bankless DAO and now I'm engaged in many DAOs, uh, Polygon, Particle, and some others, and uh, my primary interest is around uh, organizational design and governance and incentive engineering. Excellent. How about you? I'm Jen Sinassi. I co-host a show on Coindesk TV where I regularly comment, discuss, and debate about DAO and NFT news. I have a startup in the NFT space where we're kind of tackling the intellectual property concerns and issues around NFTs. And I am a content director at Windranger Labs, which is a core contributor to the BitDAO ecosystem. All right. Hey guys, I'm Harold Eitan. I'm the CEO of um, Particle. Um, Particle is uh, kind of, you know, w w the, the goal here is to create a new um, curator and collector class of, uh, in, in, in fine arts. So we, um, we bought a, 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 one of the most iconic Banksy paintings last year and uh, tokenized it and fractionalized the ownership um, through NFTs. And, you know, we're now embarking into... Um, you know, a formation of a governance structure, or if you want to call it a DAO structure, um, to ha you know, in order for the community of owners of these works of art to actually govern their physical asset. Um, so that's why I'm here. Excellent. So I'm relying on everyone up here to kind of uh, help educate me as, as folks who have, uh, you know, come up in DAOs and then have like a deeper understanding of the process of, of uh, sort of leveling up, if you will. Um, and anyone can take this question. Um, so what structures have you seen that, that tend to work when it comes to NFT projects that maybe sort of incorporate into a DAO or uh, you know, maybe they start as a DAO and then have an NFT project afterwards? Um, if, if anyone can speak to like what you've seen that actually uh, tends to work really well. Uh, specifically, what I've seen, and this is one of the best examples, is uh, if any of you have heard of um, uh, Dow Punks. Dow Punks started as a project in Bankless Dow, and what's interesting is after launching their PFP, I think it was the, it was the very first one where there was a physical merch one-to-one -one tied with the QR code that linked directly to the to the NFT. Is they spun out from a sub Dow to their own Dow, and they launched uh, governance on the NFT. And that's uh, one kind of misnomer we use a lot is we equate governance token with fungible governance token when in fact an NFT is equally can be used as a governance token. And in fact, to dovetail what the previous panel was saying, it's really an incremental evolutionary step that you prove successes over time to get to a, a fungible token. Um, and so there's a, there's a secret unlock there that I think we're, we're missing a lot of times. I hate to say it, but the Board Ape Yacht Club has, I think has, they've done a really good job at creating community, incentivizing that community, and delivering on their milestones, right? So many NFT projects are really a JPEG and a dream, but, they, but the Board Apes, you know, they come up with these crazy ideas. Of course, they have the money to, to make them come to life, but they deliver on those ideas, and I think that trust that they've created in their, in their community and, and their ability to deliver makes their community more engaged and more incentivized. And so now their plan to, to start a DAO really makes sense. That's a project where like going from NFTs to DAOs makes sense for me. Um, that's what stands out when, when you ask that question, Jose. Yeah, that's, uh, 
Yeah, I can see that. There's a lot of loyalty and passion in that community around around the NFT and then um, the identity around it. So, um, yeah, what do you think? Uh, look, from 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 the uh, I'll speak from the particle perspective. You know, we. It, it, the NFT intrinsically is, is, is what you, you, you get at first, which is your ownership in, in these physical pieces of art. And so for, for us, the, the g governance um, uh, is, an, is the natural step, is, is actually the promise, right? Governance over these physical physical assets. Now, what we're, the challenge that we have is how, um, you know, like Justice was touching on, you know, the, the, the fungible token, you know, yes or no, and if so, when. Um, that's that's kind of what we're 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 trying to come up with now. So we have a structure where you have kind of these mini sub DAOs per painting. Um, when and what you know what does what does that umbrella token look like and 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 the the, the you know the risk that maybe one cannibalizes the other is, is something that we're kind of um, you know addressing right now. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so let, let's move on to that section because um, that brings up exactly uh, part two. Uh, and so, you know, you've got the governance tokens. In some cases, you have, let's say, a PFP project, something that's more identity based. Um, and you have folks who, who kind of uh, become, let's say, major players in the DAO uh, based on, uh, you know, identity. And then you have folks who are more so whales. And so they become more influential based on voting. Does anyone see like a, a uh, I don't know, like a way where maybe one of those uh, avenues is better than the other? Like, do you think it's it's more important for uh, the NFT to be sort of the the leading indicator for who's adding value in your community, or do you think it should be more so like fungible tokens? Could I take that one? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think. There's a, there's a real opportunity here to not uh, cannibalize one or the other if, if it's approached in a way as a, as a modifier. And it solves several things. Right now, we're 100% plutocracy ruled by the rich based on, um, you know, you buy the tokens, now you basically own the governance process. By having uh, a PFP or some reputation, your identity, be a modifier and show that you're an active participant, you are a current contributor in the DAO. And then if that's the case, then the uh, fungible governance tokens you have, they are a weighted uh, entity. We get the best of both worlds. And we don't exclude people who just wanna come in and buy the fungible tokens as an investor, right? So we've put all the focus on the contributors who are closest to the problem, not excluded the investors, and kind of kill two birds with one stone. So I'm real. I'm a real fan of this this approach, and uh, it opens opportunities for pure PFP type projects on like a roadmap going forward, and then people who already have a uh, fungible governance token to introduce NFTs as that modifier piece. You know, and and so we we talked a little bit earlier. So you mentioned uh, like a season pass, like some sort of. Uh, can you talk more about that? Just because I thought that was a really good point earlier. Yeah, um, so... Is that okay to bring that up? Absolutely, okay. I love that. So I love it. Thank you. It's like a softball, man. Um, what's interesting is there's no... Um, we talk about like buy and sell pressure, but if we take that same mental model and apply it to contributors, there's, we don't have an a activity pressure, okay? I have a certain threshold. I have this many tokens. Now I'm in the DAO, and it's like, okay, cool. Now I just like jump between 64 different Discord servers, right? By introducing a season pass, some time-limited ability, what you do is you create um, a, a product. You, you, have a, you have a limited time access to your social DAO at that level, um, and you need to make a return on that access, right? So now there's a pressure. Hey, I purchased my season pass. It's for uh, you know a quarter. It's three months, and it costs me X amount, and so I'm going to do what I can to level up and make good on that. And you, you introduce like the natural flows of um, uh, what's the seasonal goals of this community? Um, what's our uh, community engagement season over season? And you, you actually get for free an offboarding mechanism. Someone came in for one season, they never came back. You have visibility to that. Right now our communities are in a Discord analytics 
And if we leverage season passes, we actually have on-chain visibility in who's actually in the DAO, you know? That's, re that's really interesting because, we, you know, there's you, everyone is touching on the same, you know, kind of issue of, of engagement and the kind of short t um, attention span that people have. And, you know, the, the, and the, the, I think the, the, the fact that you can introduce something like, uh, like, like some kind of time-based contributor window and, and it, it, it actually would force people to focus their, their, you know, their limited time on uh, projects that they're actually engaged in. And, and you know, sometimes your interests or, your, or your, your time commitments can change and you can jump in and out. But I think that's, for me, that's a really, that's a really interesting um, kind of aspect that you know, we could be introducing into these, these kind of DAO structures. Could even be via committees or tokens. I mean, any, anything like that. You know, you could be voted in. Um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go against what I what I said earlier. When I think of NFTs as seasons pass or like a membership to a community, it kind of feels like it's just going against what DAOs are supposed to be all about, right? It, it's supposed to be opening up governance. We're supposed to be providing financial access to people who didn't previously have that. And NFTs, right now at least, feel like a big financial barrier for those people, you know, bringing in some of the same issues that we see in the traditional finance world, traditional corporate world, where the people with the money are the ones who can, who can play. And so, Justice, I, I'm curious where your mind goes. I mean, I think that this is just a problem that we have to solve as an industry, um, and we, we will find the answers to that as we keep building, but I'm just curious what you think. Yeah, yeah, I would say there's a window there for, you know, um, a lot of tools out there, D-Work, Clarity, they're kind of like Trello and Jira, but with bounties built on them. And we've thought, well, this is kind of uh, basic incentive engineering. We need stuff done, we'll put bounties on it. But there's a limited uh, utility to that because the most effective teams aren't decomposing every little thing that needs done and putting a price tag on it. They say, this is our stream of income and we're not bounding every little thing. So we're like, well, what's the place of the bounties then? And I think this is where the window opens where a community can have publicly accessible bounties where anyone without any money can come in, do stuff and actually uh, earn their way through contribution and get through that access level. And everyone has stayed aligned on incentives. No one came in on a free level. Maybe people bought the season pass and there was nothing to them financially. And other people actually had to work for it and do it. But everyone is has an equal upside and downside to either waste their money or upside as in, hey, I was a part of season three. This was the focus and I contribute a lot and this is the return I got. So there's a pathway there. So we, we spoke earlier um when we first met about soulbound tokens, does anyone want to touch on that uh, and what that might change going forward? Don't don't like that's the name, what, but that's, that's what where we got now. Soulbound. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, you know um, it's funny. Uh, B. Pete's from Sobel. He has this analogy on like the history of music and uh, in different times we said, well, this is the way it is, and you know this is real music and then we enter into like, well, there's a modification on that and then we're remixes. Now we're remixes of remixes. And, and it's like, that's what all this is. It's a it's this growing compilation of different things. And so between um, transferable NFTs, non-transferable NFTs, uh, verifiable credentials, all of these can work together in different ways. Um, and, and, and just be the right tool for the right job and the right combination. You know, streaming, bounty base, like it's, a, it's all about just a different tool to design a contributor uh, funnel and incentive engineering framework to achieve the mission. So it's not an answer, but there's something. Yeah, yeah I mean, for, for, for me, I mean, the, 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 the name itself, it comes from Warcraft, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it, may, it makes it, for me. It makes total sense, and and, and, and you know, li just generally, life life is like a game, and if you approach it in that way, um, then you're actually you, you you have more of a kind of like either short term or longer term goals, and you're not just walking around aimlessly. And I think that introducing this kind of gamer mentality to real life and to um, and, and 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 to DAOs, which are you know real life, um, I. I think actually has a, has a quite a lot of, of value. It's kind of scary just to, to think about it, like uh, you know. But when you think about it more deeply, um, I was actually speaking to someone who's a, a long kind of like a ten year Reddit trader, um, and uh, 
And he was saying, you know, why these Reddit traders, are, many of them are quite successful is because they go, um, they go about trading like a game and like, you know, achievements and, and points and, 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 and um, competition. And, and actually going about it in that way, I think is quite beneficial. And, and, and uh, you know, if you, there, there's definitely some ways of introducing that into communities so that um, people can, you know, e even if it is just a, you know, a, a, a token that says that you're an expert in a certain field and, you know, everybody in that community can go to you if they need advice on X, Y, or Z. Um, I think, yeah. I, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to show our project, but it's valuable, I swear. So <laughs> we've, we've created, at, at BitDAO, um, we have a community called Embassy, and we call that our, our community layer. And it just really incentivize, incentivizes anyone in the community who wants to take part in education, um, you know, teaching other community members how to vote on proposals. If they want to share information about what's going on in the community on social media, they get rewarded. And it's very much gamified. Um, I, I must admit, I only visited <laughs> Their, their website the other day and I was quite impressed at how many people were engaged. There's a leaderboard, people are really sharing and educating each other and that's like really awesome, awesome to see. And so I, yeah, I think that it's great and I think that as we progress, uh, we'll see more DAOs doing, doing things like that. So I, I think that's the perfect segue into um, engagement. So like I said in the beginning, I, I'm someone who I'm in a lot of different <laughs> Discord servers, as I'm sure everyone here is. Um, I'm actually a particle holder, so like I'm in I'm in that Discord. Um, but I will admit that uh, there's a lot going on, and I I it's almost like trying to be polyamorous, but then not giving as much like love as you're supposed to to each of the partners you're with, you know. So um, many people laugh, like everyone could relate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, otherwise, just call it what it is, an open relationship, right? And just like define that. But like, so um, DAO engagement. So as someone who, who again, it d has not gone full, like deep down the rabbit hole as, as maybe a lot of the folks here have with, you know, bank lists and, and everything like that. I feel like I'm like a very surface level DAO contributor um, because I'm trying to find the right balance between life work and then like my contributions to DAOs. Um, has anyone seen any good strategies um, or maybe in your own communities for uh, both onboarding, so getting new folks in and having them understand where they can um, add value, uh, you know, whether it's a specific, uh, let's say, um, what do you call it, like a um, Handholding or, or some kind of process that, that leads someone through that, uh, or is is like the token tied to it? Is there a way to incentivize someone to go deeper with the token that they get? Um, does anyone want to speak on that? I mean, uh, I'm I, I I'm I'm not a I'm not involved in, in in that many in that many DAOs. But what I what I, the ones that I've you know kind of become uh, introduced to or, or, or looked at, I I haven't seen. Uh, a kind of a, a peer model where you say like these guys are doing it really well um, and I think that's uh, that, that, that's quite interesting in, in just generally in this whole space there is no kind of um, playbook I think it's kind of being written and best practice is currently being written um, so uh, yeah the, the ma you, you pointed on the, the, the challenges are really onboarding um, especially when you are onboarding people who might not be um, just purely crypto native and I think that there's you know, there's a chance, like the previous panel, of people building tools that are more um, apt than, than Discord, for example, to, to, to maintain relationships with the community uh, and that engagement. But then I think there's also some, some Web2 tools that can be used right now to plug that gap. Um, uh, pers you know, on, uh, on a personal level, I, ha I haven't found really that sweet spot, but that's something that we really need to, to work on. And, and, and that engagement and those capturing those eyeballs and keeping people interested is, uh, is extremely important because otherwise, yeah, like, like we were saying, you're, then you're, your community is gone, but it's not easy, right? Well, I, I just wanted to add, so uh, we spoke earlier and you said that the interesting thing about your community is that um, there's a lot of folks who aren't crypto native. They, they came in because of the love of the art um, and they've stuck around. Um, what do you think that's about? Like, how do you think you manage to get them to, even in like a bear market too, like to stick around and, 
and contribute. Yeah, for, for you know, for, for us, it was it was that you know, the, the 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 people who came in uh, non crypto native were a lot of the guys who were like, oh, NFTs are you know, well, I can just right click save this or screenshot it. You know, gen general kind of attitude like this. And with Particle, they were like, oh, well, there's actually this painting, this physical asset behind. I I can wrap my head around this. Let me give it a try. And then, you know, they go through the motions and they're not easy, right? The hoops you have to jump into, uh, MetaMask and bridging tokens, et cetera, et cetera, to actually purchase. And then they get the bug and then, you know, they're into it. Um, but these are the same people. And, and I'm actually one of these guys who are not like, you know, let's say uh, I'm, I don't live on Discord. I don't live online. My Twitter's, you know, I, I use it for specific purposes, but that's not... Um, where I spend most of my time and a lot I think the majority of people are going to be joining the space um, they might not be these kind of like purely my life is online people so we need to find ways to to engage with them in other ways and keep and maybe maybe it's less touch points but more um, uh, important ones I don't know you do a lot of storytelling. Uh, can you like? I think that's very important because otherwise, how are people going to know what's happening in these DAOs? Can you can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think I don't think this is just a DAO problem. I think it's a problem across the crypto industry. We're so focused on telling the story about the tech because we're all so excited about it. We all believe and know that it is going to change the way that that the world functions. But this mainstream audience that we are trying to capture doesn't care about the tech. They care about how it's gonna benefit them and because we love to talk about it, we're doing it here right now, we get really stuck in that. And so I'm a firm believer in bringing marketers into the space who don't understand the space and teaching them so that they can understand it and they can, they can tell those stories back in their own words. When it comes to community engagement, I, I think I said this earlier when we were speaking before the panel, these audiences, all of us in this room, we've been trained to be passive engagers online. We scroll on TikTok, we scroll on Instagram, uh, a like is engaging to us. That's vastly different than community engagement in a DAO, and I think that needs to be trained. And I think coming back to IRL experiences, those are really important for creating um, the type of relationships in the community that you need to have this ongoing uh, this ongoing engagement. I don't think that it should be purely online. I think it, it gets really easy to become passive when things are purely online. I think we all saw that over COVID. And so this mix of the physical and, and the digital, I think, is going to be important when it comes to community engagement moving forward. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, 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 uh, it'd be difficult to expect everybody to be completely engaged. Something we've been toying around with, and I think at, at Particle, is really having, you being able to delegate your um, your 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 votes to um, to somebody like having a having a com an elected committee, time based. You know, a few months. I don't know. It could be twelve months. Can be two years. But being able to delegate your yeah your your votes to elected officials, kind of like how government works, um, is is one way to tackle that because you can't expect your community of thousands of people to be all 100% uh, actively engaged. Could I tag on to that? What's funny is we talk about fungible and non-fungible, and then we act like the customer or the contributor or the member it, that it's all fungible. People come in, uh, contributors come into your DAO with different time, different interests, some for pleasure, some for business, some want to do all this time. If, you're not, um, if we're not designing flows and optimum experiences for these different personas, then no one wins. If they're all conflated, no one's having a good time. The people relaxed are like, why are you so serious? And the people trying to build and do stuff, it's like, can you take this serious? You know, so uh, it, introducing that variety. Um, I think we have time for one more uh, little question here. Um, let's see. So, so let's talk a little, a little bit more about like DAO fatigue and, and maybe if, is there something that, that we can do with NFTs to address that? So we talked about like maybe something that's time-based. Um, we haven't talked much about identity. Do you think like that's, you know, something that could uh, incentivize people to be more involved within their, their DAO? Like maybe specifically with regard to PFP projects or in your case, if you've got members who are like diehard art collectors in the, in the traditional art world, and now they're, they're showing up as like a crypto art collector. 
Um, that's a tough one. I, I, <laughs> I think, uh, for, you know, Dow fatigue or, 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 or keep, basically you're, you're, you're saying how do you keep people's attention, right? Um, I guess if, if the, you know, I think in the previous panel they were saying, you know, the more, you know, there's some communities where you have tons of proposals and it's like difficult to, 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 keep, to, to keep up, et cetera, and that uh, contributes to the fatigue. I think if the, if the, your, your NFT is impact, or your, 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 the ownership that you have in whatever asset it is, is impacted by um, decision making and, 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 and that's, and otherwise, you know, you, you, you're missing out on, on I, I, I'm trying to think in, in terms in, in the, the particle optics, right? If you own a piece of this painting and you don't participate in its, in its governance, then actually what does this ownership mean? It's just, it's just, it's just purely financial perhaps. Um, but you know, a decision could be made that goes against what your interests are. You never want to sell this art, but you haven't participated and you know, they voted to sell it. So maybe tying that um, yeah, tying the the ownership in in, in, in the NFTs that you that you have PFP or otherwise to that governance perhaps is a way to do it. That's a tough question. I think maybe I'm not answering the question, but this is just what came into my sure. head as sure, we we're talking ahead. about it. I think NFTs that go beyond PFPs and actually offer utility and and features for your community and projects that really deliver on those milestones, how, no matter how lofty they may sound and communicate back with those NFT holders. I think that's really important if you're going to incorporate NFTs into your DAO strategy. That's how you, how you can maintain and continue your community building. Great answer. Um, so let's find out where everyone can learn more. Where can people find you? Um, no, I'll start over here. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Singularity Hack, or just Google Zero X Justice. And um, yeah, I love to go deeper on incentive engineering and governance. And there's a real there's a real unlock that's going to happen. I think over the next year or two about not dividing these two worlds of fungible and non fungible, and seeing more of a evolutionary governance and the growth in a more organic way from NFT community base all the way up to these token launches. Um, and then and then the next stage of DAOs, which is physical asset ownership. People talk about treasury diversification. You know what's more stable than a stable coin? Physical matter, right? And so to see this unfold and these connecting the dots between these things. But yeah, I'd love to reach out, ping me on Twitter. I respond to everybody. Thanks. Yeah, you can reach me on, on Twitter, A10 Harold. You can um, you can email me, Harold at particlecollection.com. And you know, if you're if you're uh, if you're building tools that'll help um, help communities come together and engage with each other, like Discord V2, um, I'm, I'd love to chat. Um, but yeah, you can re you can reach me on my email or on my Twitter, and, and otherwise it's at Collect Particle on on Twitter. I am Jen Sanasi on all platforms. That's Jen with two N's. And I love to talk about everything, so hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, never underscore render. And uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Really appreciate it. And great to meet everybody that I've been speaking to over the course of the last month or so. Thanks. Okay, next we're going to talk about